Coming up on today's Flashcast, the biggest day in voting is today after a dramatic turn of events this week. What this means. With the smell of spring in the air and temperatures rising, what do we have to look forward to this week? Keep watching to find out. The Cavs battle with the Utah Jazz last night at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Tune into my sports report as I break down the highlights of the game. A tragedy kicked off Super Tuesday. Find out what happened later on. Today is March 3rd and this is your Tuesday Flashcast. Good morning, Portage County, and happy Super Tuesday, everyone. I'm Shane Troiano. And I'm Bella Heggie. The largest voting day in the Democratic primary start today. 14 states and one U.S. territory will be voting on Super Tuesday, and this accounts for 34% of the delegates needed to win the Democratic nomination. Bernie Sanders is currently the front runner, and other candidates will look to take the lead from him today, including Mike Bloomberg, who will be on the ballot for the first time. The wildness of the week will definitely continue on as Joe Biden tries to maintain the win from South Carolina. He will not be alone support-wise. This past week saw the withdrawal of Senator Amy Klobuchar and former Mayor Pete Buttigieg as they endorse Biden. The former candidates both say that the decision comes from them wanting to bring the country together, and Klobuchar specifically says Biden would restore decency and dignity to the presidency. This morning, tornadoes blew across Tennessee, destroying at least 40 buildings and killing seven people. One of the tornadoes caused severe damage to downtown Nashville. Authorities told people to stay indoors at least until daybreak, and schools, courts, and transit lines were closed. Damaged polling stations were moved just hours before Super Tuesday. Voting was set to begin. Thank you guys. Good morning everybody. Currently in Kent it is a mild 48 degrees. With all this moisture that we've seen on the ground the past couple of days we are going to see a lot of fog this morning with some low visibility and high humidity. Now as we look at the rest of Northeast Ohio we do see uh, a range of these mild temperatures going from a low of 39 up in Sandusky by the lake and we see a high of 50, 51 in Wooster and Canton area. Now as we look at our radar, we do see that all of this green, this rain has come across. It's pretty steady right now in Kent, so you will see some drizzles right now, but we do see this clearing right here, and then we're going to have some scattered showers throughout the day. But as for tonight, you're not going to see any rain. So as we look at our hourly, we do see that it's raining right now at 58 de 53 degrees. Around 4 p.m. it's going to be cloudy. We're going to have some high winds as the temperature lowers to about 43 and it's just going to stay cloudy throughout the night. Now as for this week, you do see we're going to see some sun tomorrow, but it is going to snow. We're going to have that day of winter on Friday, but as for the weekend, get ready for some sunshine because Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be partly cloudy as it warms up to a high of 57 on Sunday before evening out into those mild temperatures on Monday and Tuesday with some clouds. So. Now that's all I have for you this morning. Tune in to tonight's newscast at 6 p.m. for an updated forecast. Only on TV2, I'm Demetrius Hammett. Summit County Judge Allison McCarty's daughter and husband are now also being quarantined following her own self-quarantine. The judge, however, has shown no symptoms. McCarty returned from a 10-day trip to Italy on Sunday night and found out she should be quarantined yesterday. Public health officials told her it could possibly last as long as two weeks. While on her trip, the Federal Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issued a level three warning about travel to Italy. Beachwood High School canceled their trip to Italy because of the increasing number of cases of the coronavirus. The high school's orchestra was set to travel to Italy in less than three weeks, but the school board ordered it to be canceled. They were going to fly into Milan and then return from to Cleveland from Venice these two cities are areas the U.S. State Department has placed on restricted or do not travel advisory. 
Moving into Canton news, police are currently searching for a man and woman they say robbed a Burger King at gunpoint over the weekend. The robber occurred just after 6 a.m. Saturday at the fast food chain on Portage Street in North Canton. Police say the suspects Sean Phipps and Ashley Mayfield had a firearm when entering the restaurant and demanded money. Anyone with information can contact the Jackson Township detectives. Over the weekend, Sabring police confiscated over a kilo of drugs while searching a home. Police arrested the two men inside of a suspected marijuana grow home, one that police have been investigating for several months. Pills, meth, marijuana, weapons, and nearly $13,000 were found at the home, police say. According to the annual, annual report for 2019 issued yesterday, Ohio sheriffs issued the fewest number of new licenses to carry concealed handguns since 2011. The number fell by 22 percent to around 55,000. Republican lawmakers have introduced legislation to allow law-abiding adults to carry handguns without training of a permit. However, the bill has stalled in committee. When TV2 returns, seven major industrial countries united this morning to fight the spreading with coronavirus. Find out the details. Uh, four. Cavs will keep it close here is Colin Sexton knocking down the three for the Cavs. He had 32 points. Students held a candlelit vigil on Sunday. Find out why after the break. Wizard, roll for deceasedness. My dark wizard cast Super Fireball. The wizard has only rolled an eight. What? This is oh, garbage! Spell. No way level a roll like that doesn't hit a level 1 I have seven. You gotta be oh kidding me. Oh my god, what is going on? Okay. Goblin. Cease your quarreling, children. Ah! What? No! <laughs> what are you doing, you crazy monster? <laughs> Nanny? Oh, is, oh my What? God. You should stop being nerds and play d d and be nerds and watch all systems go Wednesdays at 9, where we talk everything from movies, games, to anime, and more. Yeah, no, yeah. <sighs> go watch all systems go. Welcome back, TV2. Ravenna City Council took the first step Monday towards raising license plate fees for city residents next year. Council approved the ordinance authorizing the $5 increase to the fee on the first reading Monday, and the ordinance needs two additional readings to be approved. Councilman Matt Harper says the fee would generate about $14,000 for maintenance of city streets and would go into effect next year. On Thursday, the state asked the Ohio Supreme Court to dismiss a lawsuit that challenges a delay of applications for Ohio's biggest school voucher program. The Attorney General's office asked for this because of assertions the groups lacked standing to bring the complaint and that they can't prove they are entitled to Ed Choice scholarships. Senate President Larry Obhoff said he cautiously, he cautiously op he's cautiously optimistic a voucher fix can be reached. And this morning, seven major economies, including the U.S., pledged Tuesday to use all appropriate tools to deal with the spreading of coronavirus while stopping short of immediate actions. The group, referred to as G7, is looking to aid in the response while also supporting the economy. G7 says it is ready to take actions, including fiscal measures, where appropriate. Brown's running back Kareem Hunt will not be charged with possession of marijuana stemming from a traffic stop on January 24, 21st. In late January, Rocky River Police Lieutenant George Lichman said no determination had been made about whether or not Hunt would be charged, but added charges were unlikely. With this news, the Browns are not expected to be discouraged from their plan to tender Hunt as a restricted free agent. And transitioning from the Browns to Kent State Sports, here's Matthew Mergen with more. As they, play home, as they play their final home game of the season. Five seniors will be honored tonight in a pregame ceremony to celebrate their success on the team over the years. The Flyers currently sit at 18-11 and are facing 21-8 Bowling Green Falcons. Tip-off time is 7 p.m. Make sure to tune in on the CBS Sports Network or for what should be a thrilling game between these two teams. 
The Flash's men's football team had their first spring training practice on Monday in the Kent State Fieldhouse. Coming off their historic win last se bowl win last season, Coach Sean Lewis talked about how it's a fresh start for the team, and in order to have the same success, the young guys will need to step up. This was the first of 15 spring training practices for the Flashes, and they will compete in the annual spring showcase on April 11th. Kent State men's golf team competed in the first day of the Colleton River Collegiate, and the Flyers currently sit in eighth place out of 15 teams and will look to have a comeback in the final round of play. The team shot above the par in both the first two rounds and cannot afford to do that again if they want a shot at catching Michigan State. The Spartans have won two of the past three championships on this course, and Kent State will look to catch up today as they tee off the third and final round. The Cleveland Cavaliers are back in action, back in action last night against Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz at home. Former teammates Kevin Love and Jordan Clarkson reuniting and posing for photos. Here's Bogdanovich with the alley-oop to Gobert. Gobert had 20 points on the night. Cavs would keep it close. Sexton for the three. Knocks it down. He had 32 points on the night for the Cavs. And the Cavs would keep it close. But the Jazz would answer back. Here's Donovan Mitchell to Conley for the three to end the half. And the Jazz would pull away. Mitchell had nine assists on the night. And the Jazz would run with it. Here's Mitchell with the monster dunk. Mitchell had 19, on, 19 points on the night for the Jazz, and the Jazz would continue to roll. Bogdanovich late in the fourth, knocks down the three, and the Jazz would take the game. The Jazz would win with a final score of 126 to 113. The Jazz take home the win. That's all I have for sports. Make sure to tune into the game tonight to celebrate our seniors against Bowling Green for the final home game of the season. Thank you, Matthew. Stowe County was ranked among the top fire departments throughout the United States. You, Stowe was one of the only four Ohio fire departments to be ranked nationally, and these include Dayton, Coleraine, and Parma. The Insurance Service Office independently evaluates 50,000 municipal fire departments throughout the United States with only 186 earning that Class 1 rating. And Penn State students staged a candlelight vigil Sunday to mourn the closing of a popular late night haunt. The Taco Bell on College Avenue has closed its doors to the disappointment of many hungry Nittany Lions. One student said Taco Bell is gone, but not forgotten, because it lives on in our sauce packets. The building's purple bell sign was gone, and its windows were boarded up. One student wore a taco costume, and the vigil started off as a joke, but Facebook, and it quickly went viral. For students with late-night taco cravings, there are other locations in State College, and a new one opening this summer. If you had an iPhone 6 or 7 before 2018, you could get some money back. Apple is settling a case, a class action lawsuit for admitting its software update slows down older phones. The lawsuit claims the update purposefully slows down older phones to make users think they need newer versions. Apple, however, insisted it was to stop a battery problem that caused the phone to shut down. The payout is expected to cost the company up to half a billion dollars. So I will say that with this upcoming weather, we I'm really excited for this weekend. Me too. With the sunshine that's supposed to come. Especially on um, Friday and I mean Saturday. Yeah, right after those snow showers on Friday, which I'm not too happy about. I don't know why we have to have another day of winter like that. But as we can see on Saturday and Sunday, we're going to get those mild temperatures back up as we continue on into next week. We will see a little bit of rain, but it'll be mostly cloudy with maybe some showers in the afternoon. Well, that is our weather report this Tuesday morning. So thank you for waking up with us. For more news updates, you can tune back into our live news broadcast at 6. I'm Bella Heggie. And I'm Shane Toronto. Make your Tuesday a great one, Portage County. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Think getting dumped by text is harsh. Try getting dumped by a tennis ball. My ex owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was 
kid. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? 